So our, our next speaker is, is Shafir Khalifa. Uh, um, Shafir's talk is microbial conversion of sunlight and carbon dioxide into high value chemicals. The floor is yours, Shafir. Uh, good evening, all. I think you, you can hear me and see, right? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. Okay. So uh, my name is Shafir Kalatil. I am working as a VC fellow at Northumbria University. Our research is mainly on uh, semi-artificial photosynthesis to produce solar fuels and chemicals directly from carbon dioxide. Uh, today's talk, I am going to start with one of my favorite quotes by Professor Georgi. Uh, Life is nothing but an electron looking for a place to land. So our research is mainly hijacking the electron flow from microbes to produce energy or energy in the form of electricity or fuel directly from carbon dioxide and also tracking the life of microbes under lights. What is actually happening? when we are irradiating sunlight, and also how we can actually uh, steal the electron flow from microbes to produce energy. So last year, some of our research have been highlighted in some leading journal as the cover images. The extreme left one is a cover image appeared in chemistry of material. The image depicts a graphene decorated uh, geobacter sulfur reducer this biohybrid acting as a water oxidation catalyst. The middle one is a cover image appeared in green chemistry, which is actually showing the geobacter decorated with the manganese oxide nanocrystal, very similar to natural leaf. This is also acting as a water splitting catalyst. That means we can produce hydrogen from water. And the extreme right one is a cover image appeared in JAKS which actually depicting how electrically active bacteria living on a porous electrode and acting as an anodic catalyst to make electricity from microbial fuel cell. So last year we got a pattern on how we can produce graphene using bacteria. So we actually employed electrically active microbes to produce graphene from graphene oxide. Usually people using a very rigorous chemical method to make graphene from graphene oxide. So we propose a sustainable green approach to produce graphene from graphene oxide. And the beauty of this catalyst, is the graphene is that uh, they can actually act as a uh, water oxidation or water splitting catalyst. So we can actually uh, make an alternative for chemical method to produce graphene using uh, this kind of electrical active microbes. Uh, we are still using uh, crude oil, like petroleum-based uh, chemical to produce energy, which is actually producing abundant of carbon dioxide and the crude oil, as you know, it is a depleting fuel. And we really need an alternative. And we have lots of alternative actually. And if you look at uh, one hour sunlight actually can satisfy one end of year energy demand, that means Actually, the sunlight is an abundant source of energy. Unfortunately, it's still unexplored. The question is, can we use this uh, sunlight to make energy? So there, are, there is an existing uh, technology called photovoltaics, PV technology, which is actually converting solar energy to electricity. But the main drawback of this photovoltaic is that it will only work when sun is actually there but the countries like UK, the winter countries, we are actually experiencing sunlight in very, very few times. And we need a technology which can actually store sunlight and later we can use it like a, like a chemical bond, in a chemical bond like ethanol, methanol like that. So we need a technology which can actually store the sunlight and we can use this energy whenever we need. So, whether we have that kind of technology, can we actually propose some technology? So there is, for making that kind of technology, the better way is to learn from a natural photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, in green plants and some algae and cyanobacteria, they are actually intaking 
sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and actually converting this carbon dioxide to carbohydrate and releasing oxygen as a byproduct. So they have a photosystem two, which is actually doing water oxidation. And in, in photosystem one, the CO2 is reduced into carbohydrate. But one of them, even though it is a very beautiful structure and beautiful uh, uh, protocol to use uh, this uh, photosynthesis, main drawback is it is so inefficient. The efficiency of photosynthesis is less than one percentage. And another drawback is that we cannot tune the final product. Normally, they are producing sugar as a byproduct. So we are actually learning from this one whether we can actually exceed natural photosynthetic uh, efficiency using some, some alternative way. So then we have a technology called artificial photosynthesis, which is actually mimicking natu natural photosynthetic system by making artificial leaf. So there are many ways to make artificial leaf. I will explain in later slide how we can make artificial leaf. So in artificial photosynthesis, the mechanism is very similar like the photosynthesis, taking sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and converting to fuel. And one advantage is that we can tune the product. For example, if you want ethanol, we can actually make ethanol. If you want to make methanol or butanol, whatever, we can actually tune the final product. That is one of the beauty compared to the natural photosynthesis. So the question, uh, what are what kind of artificial photosynthesis we are actually using? So broadly, we can classify artificial photosynthesis in two categories. One is abiotic, and one is biotic. In abiotic, uh, like a non-biological artificial photosynthesis, we are using a light absorber and a sacrificial electron donor. And the light absorber absorbing the sunlight and giving a photoexcited electrons, which is actually reducing carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide and hydrogen we are calling syngas. So this is the maximum thing we can actually do with an inorganic catalyst. That means we cannot go beyond uh, carbon monoxide. The latter, the, in biotic case, we have two options. One is enzyme, one is microbes. In enzyme, we can, the beauty is that it is very fast reaction, but enzyme is fragile and not like a living catalyst. But if you use microbes, it will act as a living, leaf that means it, we can actually reuse it uh, regularly as a catalyst so we have a light absorber and a bacteria which is actually integrating together and acting as a artificial leaf and continuously producing whatever product we want like acetic acid like acid or alcohol so one of the classical example we did uh, uh, very recently that we made a photo sheet which has, a, which has a one water oxidation unit and one proton reduction unit. That means we can oxidize water to oxygen and we can actually reduce the proton to, here actually we reduce proton to formate. So this is a very elegant structure to produce a, a formate directly from sunlight without any sacrificial electron donor. And it is classified as one of the first wireless uh, uh, device to, uh, consume sunlight and produce uh, formate. And actually it is featured as one of the best discovery in 2020 in, in natural energy uh, to use this kind of photo sheet to produce abundant of formate and oxygen. Then uh, the question is that whether microbes can add you know, artificial photosynthesis. So in 2016, a paper actually appeared in Science, which is the first report on artificial microbial photosynthesis. Uh, that report actually uh, made a uh, light absorber like carbon sulfate, carbon sulfate decorated on an acetogenic bacteria called Morella thermoacetica, which is actually a light absorber carbon sulfate and an acetogenic bacteria uh, Morella. And when sunlight is passing, it is making acetate from carbon dioxide, but it needs a sacrificial electron donor like cysteine. And later they have a follow-up work from same group which appeared in Natural Nanotechnology in 2018, there's gold nanoparticle again to produce acetate from carbon dioxide. But this report actually, even though it is the first reports, uh, they are actually used a very toxic material or expensive material and efficiency also very low. Then the question, whether we can actually improve this uh, system by introducing some non-toxic late harvesters and very efficient the acetogenic bacteria uh, to run this kind of uh, reaction. 
So for that, we are using different microbial cannabinoids. For example, methanosarcinia barkeri is the methane producing bacteria from carbon dioxide and morella and sporomosa both are acetogenic bacteria, which is making acetic acetate from carbon dioxide. Geobacter and Shavanala, both are electrical active microbes, which can actually make electricity and also they can produce hydrogen from proton. And finally, we are also working on some uh, uh, plastic eating bacteria. I think uh, today morning there was a keynote speaker who actually showed uh, this kind of uh, micro. So we are also working on uh, plastic eating microbes. Today's talk, I am not talking about that one, but we are working on uh, plastic eating microbes. Then, as I mentioned earlier, we made a very elegant photo sheet. Then we plan to use this photo sheet to integrate on, on an acetogenic bacteria. We use uh, Sporomosa as a candidate. We actually integrated uh, Sporomosa on this photo sheet. And eventually, we got a very good amount of acetic acid from carbon dioxide. And in, in oxidation state, we made oxygen. And uh, then we using the isotopic experiment. At the bottom, you can see that we confirmed that this acetate is actually coming from carbon dioxide. So normally isotopic experiment can actually track the mechanism where from actually your product is coming. So we use NMR technique to track the isotopic uh, chemical. And finally, we proved that the acetic acid is coming from carbon dioxide. And this graph is showing that this system is uh, acting as a living catalyst. That means we can continuously use uh, this system without any efficiency uh, uh, low. It means we can actually keep highly efficient system uh, with a continuous mode. And this we are calling as a living wireless uh, device to make acetic acid directly from carbon dioxide. Then as a proof of concept, we use this produced acetate as a uh, fuel or substrate for microbial fuel cell. So microbial, we use a three electrode uh, microbial fuel cell uh, with a porous, you can see that we made a very beautiful porous structure to make a very rigid uh, electrically active biofilm. And you can see that X-ray crystallographic image is showing the highly active porous structure with uh, some cracks because bacteria likes crack, crack the structure to make a more a thick biofilm. And eventually we got a very good electricity from acetate around three milliampere per centimeter, milliampere per centimeter square current which is one of the record current from microbial fuel cell. So it, it indicated that we can actually produce enough acetate from photosheet bacteria hybrid to run even a microbial fuel cell. There, there are a couple of research is ongoing in our lab uh, with uh, my PhD student. Uh, we have a very ambitious project to convert sunlight and carbon dioxide to jet fuel. So carbon dioxide is a C1 chemical. Uh, if you want to make a uh, jet fuel, you need to make at least a C8, C10 chemical, like uh, alkanes. So here we are actually proposing artificial photosynthesis to make acetate and ethanol from carbon dioxide. Then this produced acetate and ethanol will be fermented to medium chain fatty acid, like C4, C6 chemical. Eventually, we are feeding this medium chain fatty acid to corp electrolysis, which is an uh, electrolytic method to convert median chain fatty acid to uh, energy dense alkane, like n decay. So this one we can actually use as a, a jet fuel or drop-in fuel. And we did some uh, preliminary test actually, and a preliminary data, we used carbon nitrate as a light absorber and uh, different bacteria, for example, sporomosa and et ethanol producing bacteria. And eventually we found that we can actually produce acetate and ethanol from using an artificial photosynthesis system. And now we want to use this acetate and ethanol in a fermentation tank to convert to medium chain fatty acid and finally to energy dense alkane. So the initial data showing that we can actually produce acetate from carbon dioxide and ethanol also, which is actually a, a feedstock for fermentation. And eventually we can make jet fuel. Uh, from that is starting from C1 chemical, and eventually we can go at least C10 chemicals. And there's another research which is we are actually doing at our lab. Uh, recently, in 2020, uh, European Union uh, banned carbon nanotube usage by researchers uh, as it, they consider it as a very uh, toxic and very high concern chemical. 
and European Union asked the researchers to find out an alternative for carbon nanotube. Unfortunately, we have a bacteria, as I mentioned earlier, which is making electrical cable, like a nanowires. You can see a graphics which showing an electrical cable from uh, geobacter sulfur reduction. And this is very similar to carbon nanotube, the conductivity. So we can actually harvest uh, car this uh, nanowire from this uh, bacteria, and we can use uh, similar to carbon nanotube. And this will be a green technology. Uh, we are actually envisaging it can be a open up a bioelectronic devices. Now, people are very interested to make bioelectronics, which is very sustainable approach to make uh, electrical cable or electrical catalyst from microbes. Uh, as a summary, uh, the take home message is that we can use semi artificial microbial photosynthesis to produce solar fuels and chemicals directly from carbon dioxide without any energy input. That means sunlight is the only energy source. And also, we can actually make a jet fuel, even though it is a very ambitious project, by combining microbial method with uh, fermentation and eventually with the uh, electrochemical like electrolysis uh, to make energy dense alkane. And also we can make uh, nanowires, uh, sustainable green nanowires, similar to carbon nanotube or polyaniline as a conductive material and also a catalyst, a biocatalyst uh, for energy application. So finally, uh, acknowledging my host in Cambridge University, Professor Ruin Reisner, he was my Mary Curie fellow host. Uh, Chian, actually she made the photo sheet which I showed in the, uh, the slide. So she she's very good in making a different photo sheet. And I used my microbial uh, expertise to integrate this photo sheet with microbes, which produce a very good amount of acetic acid. Uh, Professor Direct Lovely, he discovered a geobacter sulfur reduction during his PhD time, 1982. And he provided the uh, mutant strain which can make abundance of nanowires. So he gifted uh, as this nanowire producing uh, uh, bacteria. And uh, finally, all the funding agency, including HBB. And finally, thank you so much. If you have any comments or questions. Thank you for, for that, Shafia. Really, really good talk, really excellent.